every episode of the show. It seems to begin with me sitting here and trying to figure out if everything's working. So I'm just going to start talking right away and we'll see when the video actually begins. See, because then it just takes me back to Facebook and I'm like, okay, well, what's, what's going on? With I am now streaming live on Facebook. Okay. Welcome to TU New Book Tuesday. I'm Lisa. I'm your host. This is the Mobile Public Library show where we talk about the new books that have been pre-ordered by, by Mobile Public Library and are available for you to put on hold in advance of them being released. Today we're going to go over January Hits, which is, um, here's my little thing, get out my notes, um, which is the books that I think are most likely to end up on the new book list or, or and, possibly both. Um, they have a big enough fan base and are hotly anticipated enough. They are very likely to have a full slate of holds before they even get onto the new bookshelf or not onto the new book list. So your best shot at getting it when it's released, when we've got it marked and ready to put on the shelf uh, is to put it on hold now. And that's why I do these first every month. Um, most of you who watch me every week are like, you're a textbook with arms. We know this. What are you, what are you talking about? Why do you explain it? Um, but let's get to our slides. Let's go slides. Share slides. Move everything around because it's all in my way. Move, move. You're in my way and you're in my way. I don't want to present and record. I just want to present. There we go. Canva has to make things hard. I don't really understand why. But welcome to Tia New Book Tuesday for December 1st, 2020. You put me where I go. There we go. All right. My tea for today is a lemon green tea. It's still from that set that Meredith from uh, Youth got me. It's quite nice. I like lemon tea and I like green tea. So I like them together. <clears throat> Um, also, I wanted to discuss some of the things that are coming soon to Mobile Public Library that I thought you might be interested in. The one that I've been working on for months is drive-in movies. Since we're socially distancing and you're safer, you know, with your family unit, We've been trying to do as many outdoor, outdoor activities and we have a ton of outdoor activities. You'll wanna to go to our event page. Maybe not a ton, but we, we're trying to do as many as we can, uh, including outdoor story times. But the one I've been working on is the drive-in movies. We've got a huge movie, blow up movie screen. We've got a projector, which is actually the same projector we've always used. Uh, and I figured out how to move it all into the parking lot and people can drive in and sit in their car with their family. As far as I'm concerned, if you're in your car with the windows rolled up, I don't even think you need to have your mask on because you're there with your family and you're containing your droplets and your germs. Um, so I'm gonna try to show at least one Christmas movie in December. We'll probably roll out um, a more routine slate of movies like every second. Friday or something like that. Uh, that'll probably start in January. I will definitely end up doing this first trial movie here at Maine. I'm going to talk to West and see if they have the staff for them to also do one in December, but we'll see. And it'll probably be Home Alone because it's always fun. It's, it's a Christmas movie. We like it. Also here at Maine, uh, we put exhibits up on that blank first wall that's there as soon as you come in from the parking lot. The one that's up at the moment is uh, Votes for Women, which came from the Smithsonian. It's a poster exhibit that the Smithsonian sent me. I'm taking that down sometime this week and I'm gonna replace it with a, an exhibit that was made by our intern, Rachel. It's Christmas cards through the years. So you get to see like the very early Christmas cards in Europe and then how the American tradition started, how Norman Rockwell affected it. And just for fun, in her research, Rachel found a bunch of, just a whole trend of creepy Christmas cards. I guess the Victorians were super into this. I don't, this is an example. 
yeah, I, I can't explain this. It, it exists. This was a thing that exists. It even says, may Christmas be merry in the corner where the, um, the corner of the picture with the, the bug and the, the frog fighting. Yeah. Okay, so there's gonna be, that will probably be up sometime this week at Maine. Just a reminder, we're open, but we're open for in and out service. Um, so if you come to view the exhibit, I don't think it would take you very long to just, because it's pretty much just pictures and a little bit of text, but to look through it and see it. Um, you might wanna make that a separate trip if you also want to look for new books because we're trying to keep people in and out of the building under an hour. Uh, but if you feel you can do both in an hour, then by all means do so. All right, let's talk about what I just read. I finished The Mystery of Mrs. Christie by Murray Benedict last night. It is good. I think if you enjoy mysteries, if you enjoy Agatha Christie, you should consider reading it. Um, the weird thing is it reminded me a lot of Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. And it's not that Gillian Flynn invented this sort of way of telling a story. It's just, it's so noticeable because in both cases, we're talking about a woman's disappearance and her husband is the suspect. So the book alternates between chapters of a manuscript that's sort of autobi autobiographical written by Agatha Christie, um, but actually written by Marie Benedict, because this is all fiction. And the other chapters are about Archibald Christie after Agatha disappears and it starts to hit the press and they're searching for her. As I explained last week, this is based on a real thing. Agatha Christie did, she disappeared for like 11 days in 1926, the end of 26. And it happened at a time when her marriage was unraveling and her husband was leaving her for another woman. There's a lot of debate among biographies about what really happened. So Marie Benedict has done her fictional version of it. The thing that further sort of forces me to compare it to Gone Girl is when you get to the, the manuscript chapters give you the date and it takes place over like 20 years or more like 12 or 13 um, before World War I or sort of at the beginning of the World War I all the way till the disappearance in 1926. When you get to Archibald Christie's chapters, it'll say um, one day after disappearance, which Gillian Flynn did in the chapters that were about the husband in Gone Girl. It would be one day gone, two days gone. Um, Gone Girl also has this massive split in the middle where you find out what's really going on and we get a different sort of narrator. We don't have that in this one. I almost wanted it because in the manuscript chapters, you're dealing with Agatha and her becoming who we think of her as. And that's such an exciting process in some ways, but frustrating too, because she was living with very narrow options in her moment in history in 1926 in her class and her social class that she was in. So you kind of want to see her break free a little more. Um, the thing that saves it, because part of me wanted to just hang out with Agatha Christie, like I would almost rather that than go deal with Archibald Christie, who quite frankly is not that interesting a person. Um, what saves those chapters, it's that there's so much tension because on, on a certain level, you know Archibald Christie did not murder his wife. They went on to divorce and she wrote many more novels. So him being put under this scrutiny is both uncomfortable and kind of fabulous, but really interesting all at the same time. Uh, I don't wanna go into it any more than that because I don't wanna reveal too much. I've put a little why you should read it on our Goodreads page. So if you wanna read that, you can go see that. There's also obviously a ton of reviews from readers on Goodreads for this book. It comes out December 29th. I think you might wanna check it out, it's pretty good. Next up, I'm probably going to read 
or I'm going to try to read Ready Player Two. I liked Ready Player One, but it was flawed. If this turns out to be similarly flawed, quite frankly, I may not make it to the end and I'll probably switch to reading something else at that point, but we'll see. I'll give it a chance. All right, for today's giveaway, we're doing another advanced reader copy. I'll just show you that I have the book right here. It's a quite a thick book. A lovely book. It is 400 Souls, a community history of African America, 1619 to 2019. It's split into, it's, uh, sorry, edited by Ibram K. Ibram X. Kendi and Keisha N. Blaine. Each of the essays in here, you know, do you call it an essay if it's covering history? I think so. I think that makes sense. Um, each of these essays covers a period of time in African-American history. And for the most part, I don't think any of them overlap. And there's some poems in here too, sort of about that, that chunk of years. I think if you're interested in American history, this would be a really good thing to have in your collection. Oh, and by the way, it doesn't come out till February 2nd, but I'm going to close the giveaway on Friday, and you could have this in your hands by early next week. It also might make a really nice gift. Um, just as an explanation of why I have these books to give you and what they are, they're advanced reader copies that are given to libraries. Actually, this one the publisher sent to me, I think they realize I'm doing this now, and I'm gradually starting to just get books from uh, Goodreads and from publishers so I can give them to you. But advanced reader copies may still have some flaws in them. They may still have, I think I found one in the, I was all reading an advanced copy of Mr. and Miss Christie. That was a, an e-galley is what they're called. So that was on my Kindle and I can't give it away. But um, yeah, but I, I found, I think a typo in one of the sentences, which is not uncommon. They're still fine tuning the editing on these things. Um, so yeah, it is it is the book that will be published, but a couple of things here and there might change. And because it's an advanced reader copy, they're given out for free and they cannot be resold. Um, which is another reason I don't sell them at the book sale, either you know just on the cart downstairs stairs where we're selling books or at the big book sale that we didn't get to have this year um, because they can't be sold. So all the better to give it to you or for you to get it as the giveaway and give it away for Christmas to somebody you think would really enjoy it. But if you want to enter the giveaway, uh, write, I want to win in the comments and add your preferred MPL location for pickup. As I said, giveaway ends on Friday at 9 a.m. All right. And we have the poll results. Last week I asked you guys, do you want as many of the long list of January titles as you can have, or do you want a best of episode? Because I couldn't decide. And the result is you guys couldn't decide either. Six of you wanted best of, five of you wanted new books. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do four weeks of January titles. I wasn't planning on doing a December 29th episode, I was gonna take that week off. But instead I'm gonna pre-record a best of 2020 books episode basically. And it will premiere on December 29th. Uh, I'll try to make it Tuesday 11 a.m. just to be consistent. So basically you get everything, you get all the things because you all told me what you wanted and you all wanted all the things. All right, let's get into Jan January hits. There are a lot of these um, and I wanna cover as much as possible. So we're gonna do rapid fire in the beginning to go over some of the series. And then we'll start to dig into the titles that I think look really interesting and that you might wanna check out, especially when they're like a debut author because you might not know about that otherwise. Be sure to hang on to the end of fiction though because we've got an Alabama author at the end. 
All right, let's start out. We have Faye Kellerman's The Lost Boys, which is a mystery. It's a Peter Decker and Rena Lazarus novel, and it is number 26. It comes out January 12th. 20, a Jack Switek novel by James Grappando. Um, in this one, Jack and his family are caught in the crossfire of a school shooting that kills 20 people. It comes out on January 5th. Prodigal Son by Greg Hurwitz. It's an Orphan X novel. No idea what that means. Um, but it's Orphan X novel number six, and it comes out on January 26th. The Breaker, which is a Peter Ash novel. It's number six of those, and it comes out January 12th. The Mitford Trial, which is book four series about Unity Mitford by Jessica Fellows. It comes out January 19th. Uh, Deep into the Dark. This may be series, but maybe not. It Basically, it's a first book, and I think if people like it, she might write more. Uh, P.J. Tracy is actually a pseudonym for two authors, a mother-daughter team. But the series is going to be centered around an LAPD detective named Margaret Nolan. And the duo, the pseudonym P.J. Tracy, wrote a popular series called Monkey Wrench. Uh, so if you like that series, you may want to check this out. The very first book, Deep Into Dark, will come out January 12th. Okay. One more book that I'm not super stoked about, but I thought you might find interesting and I wanted you to know it's coming out. Uh, Nick by Michael Ferris Smith is about Nick Carraway, who is the narrator of The Great Gatsby. So it takes place after Nick returns from World War I uh, he goes on a European trip, and it's about his self-discovery over the course of that trip. There aren't a ton of early reviews, but the ones that are there are putting it between three and four stars, which is not bad. If you love The Great Gatsby, you might want to check this out. I personally hated The Great Gatsby, so I will not. Uh, but if you'd like it, it comes out January 5th. All right, The Prophets. This one I think looks really unique and really interesting. Um, it's about Isaiah and Samuel who are slaves in the pre-Civil War South. They're both men and they are in love with each other and they've carved a little bit of a life on the plantation. They have a shed they've managed to sort of make as their home. And then one of the elders or a new elder arrives and he starts preaching the master's gospel. And in that is the idea that homosexuality is a sin and that anyone participating in that sin in your community could bring God's wrath upon the whole community. So obviously it leads to a lot of problems for Isaiah and Samuel. Um, this is the author's first book. The, the prose of it is already being compared to Toni Morrison, which is a really nice comparison to have if you can get it. The stuff I'm reading says that it, it definitely touches on the pain and suffering of slavery and of being queer and not accepted and all of those complicated things. But it also is shot through with hope and with the heroic power of love. I think it sounds amazing. Um, if you're interested in the profits, it comes out January 5th. All right, the push. This is another one. Well, okay, this is considered a psychological thriller about motherhood. Our main character has a daughter and she believes from the very beginning that there's something wrong with her daughter, but she knows it might be in her head and her husband seems to genuinely believe that it's in her head. And then she has another child, this time a boy, and her connection with the boy is easier. And the boy himself is more normal, so to speak, which makes it all the more clear that something's going on with her older child. Um, when life as they know is changed in an instant, the devastating fallout forces the main character to face the truth. Um, they're calling it an immersive novel about 
everything you think you know about motherhood, about what we owe our children, and what it feels like when women are not believed. Uh, it's getting almost a four and a half star rating from about 200 early reviews on Goodreads. Uh, it's another debut author, and I think this person might be might have made something really interesting that's worth checking out. It will be released on January 5th. All right, Black Buck. Um, this is supposed to be, this has been described as hilarious in multiple reviews. It's about an unambitious Black man who's given an opportunity to work for a startup. He will be the only person of color there and the atmosphere at the startup is almost a little cult-like. Uh, he hatches a plan to start helping people of color uh, begin work in the same kind of setting that he's in. It's been described as a satire of the American workforce. Um, it touches on race, ambition, and the American dream. This is all some lofty goals, but it sounds, sounds interesting to me. And it's another debut author. Uh, the early readers are giving it a solid four stars. So if you're interested in Black Buck, it comes out January 5th. All right. Sadly for remote control, I'm literally going to have to read from the page because I'm not sure. It's, you'll see. Give me just a second. Okay. The day, the day Fatima forgot her name, death paid a visit. From here on in, she shall be known as Sangophora, a name that meant nothing to anyone but her, the only tie to her family and her past. Her touch is death, and with a glance, a town can fall. And she walks alone, except for her fox companion, searching for the object that came from the sky and gave itself to her when the meteors fell and when she was yet unchanged, searching for answers. But there is a greater purpose for Sankofora. Now that death is her constant companion. Oh, but is there a greater purpose for her now that death is her constant companion? This author has won a long list of awards. Um, there are only a handful of early reviews, but they are pretty raving. And I think it sounds like a really unique science fiction title. If you're interested in remote control, it comes out January 19th. All right, we have arrived at our uh, Alabama author. The Life Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins will be set in Birmingham, Alabama. It's about a dog walker who is serving a community, a gated community that's very well to do. Um, she's also stealing from them you know, knickknacks that they probably won't miss. She ends up meeting the most mysterious member of that community, which is a widower. She thinks she's gonna seduce him to maybe get a place of security, um, but she ends up falling for him and he's falling for her. And in all of this, his dead wife is looming very large in their lives. They're calling it a fresh feminist take on the literary classic. I am going to let you guess which literary classic, because I think that reveals too much about the plot if I tell you. Um, but tons of early readers are giving it four stars. The author wrote a lot of <clears throat> popular YA and children's stuff, but this is her debut as an adult novelist. As I said, she's an Alabama author, uh, which is always nice. So if you're interested in The Wife Upstairs, it comes out January 5th. All right. Let's move on to nonfiction. We don't have a ton of nonfiction. Um, and the nonfiction new flyer is always a weird bag. Never know what to think of it. I don't even, I don't know how Michelle picks those. I do, because there's always a cookbook. I don't, know, I don't know. It is what it is. Okay, so the first one is another book I just want you to know is coming out. Saving Justice by James Comey. Um, James Comey was the FBI director for a number of years, including through the 2016 election and for several years afterwards. He already wrote a book about a memoir about his sort of moment in history and the things he observed and the things he had to reveal and things like that. That book was a bestseller. This is not that book. Uh, this is a different book, Truth, Transparency, and Trust. It's such a 
I think this is more leaning on his expertise as the former FBI director. Um, having said that, I put it here because it's being very hyped up. They've printed a ton of copies of this thing and I think most of that is coming from the fact that A Higher Loyalty, his first book, was a bestseller. I think it was a number, yeah, it's a number one bestseller. But I think that was a bestseller because of the explosive content. I don't necessarily think it was because James Comey is such a compelling writer. Maybe he is, I don't know. I, yeah, I just wanted you to know this was coming out. I, the question of, do we care? Like if he's not revealing things we didn't know, if he's just gonna talk about justice in a vague sort of a way, do we care? Um, if you do, more power to you, it comes out January 12th and you can put it on hold now. All right. Okay, yeah, okay. So three wise men, a Navy SEAL, a Green Beret and their Marine brother, how and how their marine brother became a war soul survivor by Bo Wise and Tim Cilio. Um, Bo Wise and his two brothers enlisted in the military. Um, say, yeah, as he puts it, they were blood brothers and they were also brothers in arms. Uh, there is a very old rule because of, Back in the Civil War, apparently, there was an entire family where all five siblings were stationed on one boat together and the boat went down. So they lost, one family lost all their children because of that. Ever since then, there's been a rule in the military that siblings don't serve in the same space. Like they can't serve on the same boat if they're in the Navy and they can't, um, I think they can't be on the same base. If, uh, if they're in the army or whatever, that kind of thing. And if they are all serving in the military during a time of conflict and most of them die, the military has a standard practice of grabbing that last sibling and removing them from the conflict and sending them home so that a family doesn't lose all of their children the way that that family in the Civil War did. This is, so far as we know, the only case of this during the war in Afghanistan. Um, Bo Wise's two brothers died in combat in conflict and were given the Silver Star and the Intelligence Star. One got the Silver Star, one got the Intelligence Star, which is, they're both really high honors. Um, so he wanted to tell the story of his family of his brothers, of the service they provided and the sacrifice his family made. If you're interested in what is probably a really powerful memoir, it comes out January 5th. Uh, Robert E. Lee and Me, Southerners Reckoning with the Myth of the Lost Cause by Ty Sidjul. Um, the author was taught as a child in the South because he's, he's Southern that Robert E. Lee was a great man and this, that the Civil War, that the South lost the Civil War with honor. He went on to join the military. He went through West Point. He became a Brigadier General and then later a professor of history at West Point. In adulthood, he feels differently about that period of American history than he did as a kid. So he wanted to write a book about that. He's explaining what he was told, um, what it means to honor a system that subjugates other people and how we ended up with this cultural distance between the South and the rest of the country. So he's, uh, the description is saying that it's like part history lesson, part memoir, um, and that it's deliberately challenging the myths and legends of the Confederacy. Because it's nonfiction, there aren't a lot of reviews. <clears throat> but I was thinking about it. This is a book written by a Southerner, and I think aimed at Southerners. 
from the, the way it's described in the description, it doesn't sound like this is a southerner explaining the South for anyone else. I think this is directed at us, which makes me kind of not care what the review said. Because if it's written for a member of our community and aimed at us, do we really care what someone in California thinks? I mean, if, if they're really into well-written books, they might have something to say on that score. But other than that, it's not for them. Um, but it is for us and it is coming out on January 26th. All right, that's all our books for today. So don't forget, you can win 400 souls by commenting, I want to win in the comments down below. Um, I have my, I have a longer review of the mystery of Mrs. Christie on our Goods Reads group. And as always, I'm putting out a newsletter with MPL pre-orders, which will have all these books on it. You can sign up for that in the link in the description. And I think we can all take a deep breath. It's December 1st. We have reached the home stretch of 2020. Unfortunately, this is what the home stretch looks like. Yeah, I just thought that was funny. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next week for more January titles. All right. Now I have to not so gracefully get out of this. I don't know. No. Skip, skip. I don't understand why this is always so hard for me. Okay.